Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Excuse the technical issues here that we had. Um, a couple words on myself. Um, my name is Andreas Odemann. I am a, a freelance translator and a freelance cr a cross trainer. And I have graduated from the University of Bonn. My languages are uh, Chinese and uh, English and, of course, German. We are going to talk about um, how to manage a translation memory with a cross, as opposed to, of course, some other translation memories. But first, let me tell you a few words about ACROSS if you don't, if you have never heard of it or are just looking into it. The ACROSS Systems GmbH has been in the market now for about 10 years, or it's close to 11 actually now. The headquarters is in Karlsbad, which is down south of Germany near Karlsruhe. And the ACROSS Systems is just a software producer. They are not brokering any any assignments or jobs, they are not collecting any translation memories or uh, terminology or whatever. There are about 35,000 translate, 35, translators in the world using ACROSS with another 1,000 so-called client-server installations, which is the software version for our uh, clients through which they assign jobs to us. Across Systems has introduced um, Cross Market, a social media platform where uh, end clients, freelance translators, and uh, translation agency can find each other. Across also provides the so-called translator academies, which is a, a seminars in uh, different cities of Germany or in uh, neighboring countries. There is a um, translator advisory board of which I am also part of. Um, there are three advisory boards, one for end clients, one for uh, tra um, translation agencies, and one for translators. And these advisory boards are there to advise ACROSS on how to make the software better for each of the respective groups. ACROSS also provides free of charge webinars and uh, tutorials. What is the translator edition? The Across Translator Edition is the new name of the software for us freelance translators. It has been renamed with this um, before it was called the Personal Edition. Um, and the Translator Edition, or ATE as I sometimes call it, is a full CAT tool package um, consisting of the Across technology, which is a software that we are using to do the translation the cross-market profile and, of course, support and updates. With the Translator Edition, ACROSS has also introduced two different versions of the software. One is the basic and one is the premium version. The basic version is still free of charge for freelancers, and uh, but it has a somewhat limited um, functionality as compared to the premium version which is a software version um, based on a subscription model. You can subscribe to ACROSS uh, for uh, 3 or 12 months and the rates are 1950 euros per month or 2450 uh, for a 3 month prescription, S subscription. Um, ACROSS can be used to translate your own projects when you use your own projects, um, you need to have the premium version. And uh, you can also use it as an offline client, which is um, uh, where you can then process the assignments that you receive from your clients through their servers or with the um, translation packages that contain everything that you need to do the translation. If you want to find out more about ACROSS, please take a look at my-across.net. We often see webinars on uh, other CAT tool programs that um, want to teach the translators on how to build your folder structure uh, on your computer, how to name your files, where to store all the translation memory because in other 
softwares, the translation memory is file-based. Across is different. Across has one big local database. The uh, database has three different sections. One section is the section across where all the settings and, uh, and projects and so forth are uh, stored. The next section is the so-called cross tank. Cross tank is the translation memory of across. And the third section is, as you may have already guessed, the cross term section where all the terminology of across is stored. So across has one huge advantage as compared to other tools. It consists of one big database. You don't have to worry about folders on your computer. You don't have to worry about how to name your files so that you can find the translation memories that you need for any project. Um, there is, you don't have to search your computer, where have I stored that translation memory file? There's no more annoyance, like when you're working on a project and you know that there is a certain match that you're absolutely certain it is there, but it is not in that particular file that you have included in your project. The um, across translation memory works in both directions. So once you have a translation memory unit, like for instance English German, you may access that translation uh, memory unit no matter whether you are working um, on a translation English German or you're working on a translation German English. It's all the same to across. And, of course, you can have multilingual translation memories. So that is, um, you have everything in this one big database. What you have to do with your translation memory is, as it is a database, and then if you're familiar with databases, then you know that these are working with attributes. So for to each translation memory, there is there are certain attributes assigned. The standard attributes that are there is the relation, like for instance your client, then subject, and the project, and of course the languages. But you may also set up user-defined attributes. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And in order to organize your, your translation memory when you're actually working with it, you need to assign or define so-called penalties. We'll take a look at that in a minute too. Because now we're going to let, take a look at the translator edition in live mode. There we are. So let's take a look at the attributes first. We go to the systems settings in across. And in the general section here, we find the entry system attributes. The standard system attributes that cannot be deleted or anything because across absolutely needs those as I mentioned earlier, is projects, relations, and subjects. These are filled through different um, uh, parts of the program, like the relations um, is, is filled with the, with the relations module that you find here on cross-board on the left-hand side. The projects is automatically filled each time you set up a new project. Then 
you have the attribute values for projects. And the subjects are filled by setting them up here in the subjects section. If you want to add a user-defined system attribute, it's very, very easy. You simply select here the system attributes and click on the bu uh, button Add. Enter the name and that, that's it. However, you also have to define attribute values. For instance, I have set up here already a, um, a attribute and client. This might be useful for those of you who uh, work often with agencies and uh, your agency tells you who the end client is. Then you might use that attribute um, set up a new project. Then in this, on this screen, you see on the bottom the attributes. You define here which subject you want to use, which relation you want to use, and of course also the end client that you want to use for this project. I will abort this now here because we don't have already prepared the, um, the projects that uh, I want to use to show you what happens then in CrossDesk. I go to my tasks and I open and I open the task. So now we have here at, at the bottom you see the translation memory. You see the match for this particular um, paragraph. It shows you the translation. It shows you the subjects below, the projects. You can see that there are two different projects here. And it shows you the relations across systems and all languages, all subjects, translation agency. And you also see the quality of the match. We have here now a 90% match. When you hover your mouse over the 90%, you get a tooltip that's showing you, okay, which um, penalties have been applied to this match. We have that 7% penalty for project, and we have the 7% user-defined system attribute penalty. Unfortunately, it does not show us which um, user-defined uh, attribute that is. As you can see, this is the entire translation memory that we are using. That's the entire translation memory that is currently stored in cross tank. When you have worked a few years with a cross and you're uh, cross tank uh, entries become more and more and and uh, in some cases you get like 10 20 matches shown here which you don't want to see you can use the attributes that we have set for each of the um, uh, entries to put a filter on it so there is this little filter symbol, and you can set a filter. And for instance, we want to see now only the attributes that match a certain relation. 
like the across systems. And now, as you can see, below that little match, this line here, projects and uh, relations, has changed. It only shows you now the relations across systems. And of course, the match has also changed, as you can see, the quality. You see here now the 